In physics, you learn that if you move with the velocity v during a time delta t, you travel a distance of v times delta t. But what happens if you make delta t smaller and smaller? Then you will travel smaller and smaller distances, and eventually your distance traveled becomes zero. But the total distance traveled is the sum of all distances during those, those small time intervals, which is zero. So the total distance traveled would be zero, so you cannot move. This is not true, of course. We have an example of a so-called paradox. The problem here is that your velocity equals delta x divided by delta t, where both delta x and delta t become very small. If delta t equals zero, you cannot compute the quotient anymore. You cannot divide by zero. So how do we resolve this issue? We can use a mathematical tool for this, called a limit. What it does is that it gives information about the point where a function, in this case the quotient at delta t equals zero, is not defined. Using information when you get arbitrarily close to this point. Actually, this is quite a deep idea if you really think about it. So it is not so strange that the ancient Greeks, from whom the paradox comes, could not resolve this issue. It took until the 18th century. Well, we can profit from all those results for all our applications, and we will start with this idea of a limit of a function at the point in this video. So what does this mean? Suppose we have a function f from a domain d, subset of r to r. Well, what does it mean, a limit? Well, we write it like this. A limit from x approaching a with the minus means we approach a but we uh, r with our x is below uh, a, fx equals l. That means that we can get arbitrarily close to this y value l if we pick x close enough to a but smaller. If we take instead of the minus a plus sign over here, so limit x to a plus fx equals l, that means that we can get f of x arbitrarily close to l, but now by taking values of x above a, so coming from above, hence the plus. So how does this look in an example? Let's take the function fx equals x squared and we will take a equals 2. What happens if we go from above to this point a? So we start at x equals 2.5. Well, we plug in 2.5, 2.5 squared equals 6.25. So then we are over here on the y-axis. And now we want to approach the value x equals 2. So we start at 2.5 and we take smaller values approaching 2. So we continue with 2.1, we com compute 2.1 squared equals 4.41, which is over here. And then we continue to approach, so we take smaller values, but still above 2, like uh, 2.01. And if we compute uh, f in 2.01, we get 4.0401. Well, it's not possible anymore to draw it in this graph. And you see well, what's happening, we are approaching a value of l, uh, which gets, we get arbitrarily close to 4, but we are taking values above x equals 2, so we are approaching 4. We do not get to this value, but we will get arbitrarily close. So what happens if we go from below? Again, fx equals x squared, a equals 2. Now we will take values of x smaller than 2 and see uh, what we get. So let's start with 1.5. So x equals 1.5 over here. And we compute the function value 1.5 squared equals 2.25 over here. And then we continue. Uh, uh, we get if we get closer to x equals 2, like we take 1.9, we get 3.81. So x equals 1.9 so over here, function value 3.81 over there. And then we continue, we take values even closer to 2 but not equal to 2 and smaller, like 1.99, and the function value equals 3.9601. And so you see, we are below x equals 2, and we uh, get arbitrarily close 
to 4. So the limit also coming from below uh, for x, to, uh, x going to 2 equals 4. You can see it from the graph. So if we say that both limits coming from below and from above approach the same value L, then the shorthand notation is limit x approaching a fx equals L. Then we say the limit of f of x for x going to a equals L. So the crucial part here is that we get information at the point x equals a using information of points x in the neighborhood, in the vicinity of x equals a, but no, we do not come actually at the point x equals a. No, we stay away from x equals a, we use information from x is very close to that, and using only that information from points close to x equals a, we get information about what happens at x equals a, and that is what we call the limit.